friends of Mary Champion had uh, one five-letter word that they classified her with, and it was class. She was an elegant Southern lady from West Point, Georgia, as a matter of fact, and she just brought a lot of grace and elegance into the President's home. She loved living in the President's home. She filled it with a lot of warmth, some young children, as some of the others had young children, and a lot of fresh flowers. Mary's daughter Sally was nine, the son was seven, and she insisted when they had all sorts of entertainment here, Easter egg hunts, other functions, that the children be involved with the students and other young children also. She hosted events here in the President's home, luncheons particularly, some breakfast, and we would bring in visitors for different projects we were working on. Everybody always complimented us when they left. It was so good to meet Shirley, it was so good this. And I noticed when we were setting up, she always was so careful about making sure everything, the silverware and everything was in the right spot. She was very particular. I remember the gatherings of students and protesters here at the President's home a number of times and Stan and Shirley were right there on the spot and did a wonderful job in addressing those issues. And they were tough. They were really tough issues on education and on, on the campus uh, during the, right there near the end of the 60s. I'm not sure you could measure it at the moment as well as you can measure it here in the aftermath, the history. Some of the things that Stan and Shirley did in addressing those issues uh, on campus and in, and in talking with the alumni on the road um, turned out, I think, to be very impressive and very successful and the right thing to do. And uh, so I think they leave a record here of a specific time in which there were specific issues that needed to be addressed, and they did. It was tough. It was a tough time. Late 70s, 80s, and 90s, it's this era was the Slager era, and it was, it was about Bernie. He was a very outgoing president, but standing beside him all the time, keeping him grounded, was Greta Slager. It was one word I always remembered that would bring Bernie back to center, and that was he'd be going this way or going that way, and Greta would say, Bernard. It was never Bernie or Bernard, it was Bernard. Key word. They left the Upper Peninsula of uh, Michigan. Bernie went off to World War II, came back. They went to Michigan State, LSU. Next stop, Florida State, and they were a couple always. She'd walk outside, Bernie would be sitting off of one side talking to somebody. Greta was running the show. She is the only First Lady to have come to Florida State University having been in that role before as First Lady at Georgia uh, Southern and uh, then on to the University of Maine and then to Florida State University. And the talents that she brought and that graciousness, uh, that's a word that whenever I think of Mrs. Lick, I think of the word gracious. And, uh, but the skills that she brought and wanting to make sure that everybody was welcome. And so we had the idea with this group that we wanted to introduce them uh, bring them to the president's house. It was the old president's house at that time. And, but to have an opportunity to not just meet the president, but to meet the first lady. And what was Mrs. Lick's real role as the first lady? And uh, so I understand that that was the first time a program like that had ever been done. It was phenomenal. Those young people loved it. She had them in the palm of her hand and with that coquettish smile that she has and that willingness and looking you in the eyes. She's a phenomenal, phenomenal person. Don't tell Sandy this, but I always thought that Patsy would have made a great president of our university. You know, before she even became first lady, she was an accomplished journalist. Uh, she worked 
with Governor Childs on children's issues. She was on the White House staff with President uh, Carter. Uh, she had already had a bachelor's degree in journalism, a master's degree from the Harvard Divinity School. And, and actually, when she was First Lady, she obtained another master's degree in conflict resolution. And of course, we all know, went on to get a law degree from Florida State University as well. Patsy, for me, is a person who has always been passionate about justice, about human rights, about civil rights, and particularly advocating for those whose voices had been silent. She is one of the most compassionate, forthright, and honest people I've ever met in my life. And she is a real treasure to this university. Molly manifests a lot of great memories in my past. Uh, we remember her as a gracious host, always in attendance at a multitude of campus events. She always made everyone feel very welcome at the President's House. And when Eric and she were there, there were a lot of events at the President's House. I always remember her big smile. Molly, to me, personified the ultimate First Lady role model. I guess my uh, lasting memories of Molly would be at the President's Box. Because of my role with the Alumni Association at the time, I was a frequent guest at football games, and I'll never forget at the end of the third quarter, members of the Marching Chiefs would be invited to the President's Box. Molly would put on a headband with a feather on the back of it, get a baton out, and lead the Marching Chiefs. I'll never forget seeing her do that. She's a big fan, and Molly, we love you. We have a lot of events at the house. Uh, she's an incredible hostess. Uh, she, uh, she, she loves the community. She loves Tallahassee. She loves reaching out to people in the community on behalf of FSU. So, you know, again, I think uh, that's a role that I think is important because of our relationship with the community. and. Uh, Jean does it in a remarkable way. The opportunity to get to see the students, see them grow, uh, then see them graduate. We've had, a, had an opportunity to do that and meet many of them. And, uh, you know, they come to the house, they come to the office, uh, we see them at events. And, uh, you know, she uh, likes to tell them to call her Gigi because she's probably old enough to be their grandmother for most of them. But she's, uh, I believe, a special person to them and, and I think somebody that they can identify with as a person who cares about them away from their own homes and uh, she's done a, a magnificent job in that regard. Having somebody that I can I can talk to, uh, having somebody that I can relate about issues uh, to, uh, having somebody just to confide in you know from time to time, uh, the good times and the bad times and there's sometimes we've had some some rough spots since we've been here but uh, she's a st incredible stability, incredible uh, person who cares about people, cares about me and our relationship, obviously, and cares about being as supportive as she can to both me and Florida State University. Their role was so important, but I'm not sure that we really realized that during the time that we were, whenever we were there. All the ones that I knew here at Florida State really perceived their role as being a strong, supportive role of their husbands. I never saw any semblance at all of ego, uh, lack of humility and so forth. They knew their role and they played it well. And it's not just the guests, but it's the commitment to our students, our staff, our faculty, and just loving the university. We've had a remarkable string of first ladies that I've been associated with. This center is a reflection on first ladies. It, it's, it was their home and we extend that today through the Alumni Association.